Alright, so I made a video a couple weeks ago now, giving my opinion on Infinite Warfare, but that was before the game was actually released. So now I'm going to do another video, which is pretty much the same as before, just I've actually played the game now. So the game's been released for about a week now, which you probably already know, and, well, it, it's pretty shit. But I'm not making this video to hate on the game again. I want to talk about what I think is good at, about the game and what I actually enjoy about the game. So, first off, I'm going to start off with the campaign. I haven't actually completed the campaign yet. I've only done the first three or four missions of it. But what I've played of it so far, I'm actually really enjoying it. I feel it's really simple and not as confusing as Black Ops 3. It's still not as simple as Modern Warfare or the really old Call of Duties. But they've definitely made the storyline a lot less complicated than it was in Black Ops 3. I mean, I can't take Kit Harrington seriously when he's a bad guy. Because every time he appears in the campaign, the only thing I can imagine is Jon Snow from Season 1. And it just really doesn't make a good bad guy in a game. But I'm not going to judge the entire campaign. Just off the fact Kit Harrington is the main antagonist in it. So secondly, I'm going to be talking about the multiplayer of it. Which is probably the most controversial of the whole game when I think about it. Obviously, there are thrusters just like there were in Black Ops 3 and in Advanced Warfare. But I feel the thrusters in Infinite Warfare really aren't as used as much as in Black Ops 3 or in Advanced Warfare. Because like in Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare, people would use them while in a gunfight with someone and just fly up in the air and kill you and you just... Everything's going everywhere. But that happens a lot less in Infinite Warfare. In Infinite Warfare, thrusters are mainly used just to move around for like ease of access to places like on ledges or like I can't remember what that map's called, but there's like in the middle you can like thrust jump. And it's m mainly used for movement and not so much as to get an advantage on killing. So you can also just like walk around the map. The thrusters don't really give you any more advantage to moving around the map. It's more just you'd get around the quicker if you use them. So. Also, their supply drops and crypto keys, just like Black Ops 3, and I'm pretty sure Advanced Warfare have them as well. But they haven't actually added COD points yet, which I'm pretty surprised about. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be adding COD points in the next couple of weeks or so. And supply drops, I know a lot of people hate them, but they're making Activision quite a lot of money. So they're not going to be going any anywhere anytime soon. So you're just going to have to get used to them. So the last thing I'm going to be talking about is Zombies in Spaceland. Now, I've only played a couple games of Zombies in Spaceland on inf of Zombies in Spaceland, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. But from what I've actually played, even though I've only played about five or six games of it, I'm absolutely loving it. Like, just the way it plays and the way it feels, even when you knife a zombie, even when you get hit by a zombie, just everything about it, shooting a weapon, anything, it just feels so much nicer and smoother than Black Ops 3. And and they kept the three-hit-down system from Black Ops 3, which is, that, that's pretty good. So, they've... Like, you probably, you must know that the Gobble Gums equivalent in Infinite Warfare is called Fate and Fortune cards. They're pretty good. They're exactly the same as Gobble Gums in Black Ops 3. But I don't really like the fact that you have to wait until, like, the Specialist meet on Black Ops 3 and in Infinite Warfare. Where you'd normally get the Ragnaroks or whatever. Once that fills up, you now get a Fate and Fortune card. And I'm not really too big on that. Even though you can choose which one you want. Even though with Gobble Gums, you go up to the machine, you hit it. It's a one in five chance of what, like, you're going to get the one you want. But so that's the good thing about the Fate and Fortune card. You can choose which one you want. But what I don't like about it is, say, you're using the Infinite Warfare's version of Alchemical Antithesis. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure if they even have one. But say you're using the Alchemical Antithesis in Infinite Warfare. You can only use it once. And then every time you want to use it again, you'll have to go to the, the booth. I don't exactly know what it's called. You have to pay 5,000 points to refill your deck. And then you're going to have to wait for the specialist meter to fill up. And each time you've used it, you have to pay another 5,000 points. And it's not really a big deal on, well, when you get to pass around 50 or 60 or whatever. Because by that time, you're just racking up on points. But I just feel like... You, I'm not sure. I just preferred the whole go to a couple of machine, hit 500 and just hope you can get an alchemical antithesis. There's also a few small things in zombies that need fixing, like... Practically every weapon in the game needs a buff, and the brute needs nerfing a lot, but because he's just too over, he's just too difficult to kill. I mean, I, I don't think he should be nerfed to Brutus's standards of being easy to kill, but he needs to have like his health taken down a bit. Come on, but like apart from that, Zombies in Spaceland is 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 amazing. So that was my that was that was my new opinion on Infinite Warfare. Now this actually came out and I've played it. I might do another video like this on Modern Warfare. I'm not actually sure if I'm going to do it or not yet. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, go down and leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one.